Ahoy, mateys! Welcome back to Evil Under the Sun, where we are now beginning episode 4 and still have not seen a murder happen. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it and hope we get our murder that is so commonly talked about in this episode. August 24th, 1940. Afternoon. I didn't think you were here, sir. Your towels are fresh and your bed linen changed, so never you mind about that. Huh. Good grief. That girl certainly got the wind up over something. The boyfriend, Will Jinx. I suspect he's their cause. Who we still haven't met. He's the garage guy, I think. Real quick, I'm actually going to lower the music volume, because... Sometimes the music is just way louder than everything else. <laughs> it's good music, but a little too loud. <laughs> okay, now we'll resume. Okay. So this is chapter two, then, I take it. <laughs> Took us a little while to get here. It always takes me a minute to get acquainted with these games. All right. Murder on the Orient Express, I think, was around four chapters. So if we can use that as any kind of point of reference, then it looks like we're about 25% of the way done. Look at this. This is the uh, watchtower that Poirot wouldn't let us go up before. Oh, shit. Who are you? Oh, this is, uh, this is Hillary, right? Do you observe anything unusual, Madame Castle? Yeah, M Hillary Not Castle. Not yet, I'm thankful to say. Mr. Blatt's sailboat put into Leathercombe Bay a short while ago. I suspect he'll make for the monkshood before heading back out. Okay. Uh, what is the monkshood? What is the monkshood? The only pub still open between here and Kingsbridge. Albert Bagley runs it. Well, we gotta go meet this Albert Bagley, then. What do you look for so intently, Madame Castle? U-boats, Mr. Poirot. I have seen them, too. Yeah, that's scary. So close to shore? Oh, yes. I suspect there's one out there right now. Watching. For those who don't know, the U-boats were the, uh... What's the word? They were like the submarines, the battleships used by the Germans in World War II. Have you told this to Monsieur Blatt? Yes, I did. He laughed at me and said they were not likely to waste a torpedo on his tiny sailboat. He has their point there. <laughs> That's kind of true. Who has the key to their smuggler's end? Colonel Weston took charge of it when they closed up. Colonel Weston? But he is an old friend of mine. Wait, we know He's him? He set up shop in the police station. But is he not the chief constable for the entire district? Yes, but he runs the home guard for this area. He's overseeing the coastal evacuations. We used to have a local constable, but after evacuations got underway, he was transferred to Modbury. Okay, so Colonel Weston is the chief constable then, and apparently Poirot knows him. Whether or not that's a good thing or not remains to be seen. Um, let's borrow her binoculars real quick. May I borrow your binoculars? I need them, Mr. Poirot. Okay, never mind. I promised Colonel Weston I'd keep watch. Surely oh. no attack will come during the afternoon. Why do you want binoculars? Uh, kind of want to... We can observe the guillemots. I'm probably saying that bird name very wrong. Or to help watch for the U-boats. That's not really believable. Let's go with the birds. To observe the guillemo at the sanctuary of the birds? Guillemo? You don't strike me as the bird-watching type, Mr. Poirot. That's because I'm it lying. It is odd that you say that, madame. I thought the same of a gentleman I met this morning. What gentleman? North. He called himself yeah. Mr. North. Is he perhaps a guest? No, I've never heard of him. Okay, so North has become even more suspicious. To help in the watchful U-boats. Oh, we can still try this. Well, I do have other duties to attend to. I mark any sightings on the calendar in my office. If you would do the same, I then pass on the information to Colonel Weston. But of course. And if you wouldn't mind doing me one small personal favor. Sure thing. I would be happy to assist you, madame. If you would return this book to the lending library, Ooh. I'd think that a very fair trade. Side quest. I shall do as you ask. Here you are, then. I'll be off. All right, sounds like we're going to be getting off to the village this time, so I'm excited about that. Uh, it sounds like there's a pub down there we can go to, too. I'm, just quite I'm excited. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, binoculars. Let's go ahead and... These are the binoculars most splendid, but I cannot see anything of particular interest here. 
Okay. Uh, can we check again to the right, or is it just one view for everything? These are the binoculars. No, I... Oh, I can check on all sides, can't I? <laughs> Watch us, like, put them up and the freaking Bismarck is out These there. Are the no, nothing there. Do, 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 do. Okay, who was that on the sailboat? I always forget his name, but that is a guy that we know of. The Germans had the biggest ship that had the biggest guns. The Bismarck was the fastest ship that sailed the seven seas. On her decks were guns as big as steers and shells as big Oh, what do we have here? Either that's a disembodied floating periscope, or we have a U-boat sighted right off the coast of the island. It is quite a view. Okay. Can we see that again? Just curious. Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, yeah. We have some, some suspicious activity going on off the coast. Shit, what did she- how did she say I'm supposed to report that? Was there like a log somewhere that I'm supposed to say? Uh, shit, 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 where do I go? <laughs> I'm not sure. That's, um... Apparently they sight U-boats often, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. The last thing this island needs is the Axis invasion. <laughs> okay, maybe it's in her office. Hey, she's not here now. Let's snoop this shit. A key. Awesome. Uh, a calendar. Oh, okay, this is how she marks the U-boats. Okay, so today's the 24th, so let's go ahead and mark that up. Wait, we don't have a pen. Okay, so there were U-boats seen on the 11th, 17th, and the 21st. Oh, and also the 2nd. Uh, I don't think I see a pattern there, but it could be one. What was that? Wait, oh, what did we just pick up? Hotel floor plan? Ah, now we know who stays in what room. Nice. Okay. Looks like our neighbors are Rosamund Darnley the Dressmaker and Mr. and Mrs. Redfern. I don't think we've actually met these two yet, but we've seen them sailing about and swimming and shit like that. Okay, what else is on the desk? The felt on the bottom appears to be loose. On the bottom of the statue? Fascinating. What's going on here? A plate with a keyhole in it. Well, we have a key that was conveniently located 18 inches away from the keyhole. So let's see Another what's inside key. it. Another key? Okay. One could hardly call this bust a bust at all. Wouldn't you say, Poirot? Get out of here, Hastings. Uh, Don't talk to me. A welcome appearance by the most elusive rarity, the wit of the British. <laughs> right. No need for barbs, old man. God, these dudes are great. What, did we take the key? Okay, we did. Key. Key indeed. Binoculars along to the castle. Okay, how do we mark in her journal, though? Because I'm, like, kind of concerned about, you know, U-boats being out there and us not telling the authorities. Maybe we'll just go tell Weston himself. A solidly built safe that needs a key to open it. <laughs> well, it looks like we figured out where the second key goes. Now the question is, how many keys are going to be inside this safe? There's nothing... The safe... It opened effortlessly. It must see frequent use. Was it even locked? A common enough oil lantern used for signaling. Okay. We will leave it for the present hastings. We know it's there now. Good God, Poirot. That's a German two-way radio. Uh... I think we'd better have a talk with that castle woman. Is she a spy? No. Make a note of the codes. But we must not remove anything or mention our discovery, Hastings. I agree something is not right, but let us rest and see what occurs with her. Bro, is Castle the freaking Nazi spy or something? Is she in cahoots with uh, Marston from the last game? These codes aren't standard Morse. I don't like the look of them at all. Dude, she's, she's serving Zephyr, isn't she? That's creepy. Okay. Well, that is that is one dark secret we have uncovered already. I don't think there's anything she could tell me now that would change my mind about what I've just learned. Like, she said she was offering classes on, like, telegraphs and shit to uh, some kid on the island, but 
You don't need a German radio for that. And you also don't need a book of confidential codes and whatnot. Real quick, let me check the registrar real quick. Did I see... No, it was Masterman. Masterman was the name that was familiar. Marston was the name of the Nazi spy who was a character in, um, in the last game. Uh, freaking... And then there were none. I always forget the name of that game because it's so weird for a title to begin with and. Get your conjunctions out of the first, <laughs> first word of the sentence. Okay. Uh, I think we are now going to try to take that sea taxi we saw last time. I'm not going to go explore the rest of the island yet. I've seen plenty of that. Uh, down the island this way, there is a sea ferry. Let's see if it works this time. Hello? Need the sea tractor, do you? Yes, I do. Yes, please. On me way. On me way. Oh my god. Look at that thing. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Oh an old, old gents doddering around in their great war kit. There's quite a few lads like me who are itching to get into it, but weren't allowed to enlist. We train. We know how to fight. Okay, Jero TC. So, he wasn't allowed to enlist. I don't even know if this is gonna be a character. Who is this dude? Oh, I guess we can't even go talk to him. Well, hey, we're on the mainland now, and I'm excited, because that means a whole lot of new places to explore. Motor cars and boats repaired. I am liking this music, too. It's like Secret of the Old Clock, but with more of a 40 swing. Uh, some kind of auto body shop? You're Mr. Jenks, aren't you? Ready to head back to the island, Mr. Poirot? Oh, no, it's this Not guy. quite yet. I know we haven't been properly Oh, it is Will Jenks! But I'm Will Jenks, <laughs> and I've heard you're a famous detective. Okay. I am the detective, it is true. But famous? No. That is something of an exaggeration. Steady on, old boy. Steady on. Ah, Hastings, you caution me against braggadocio, so I display modesty, and still you find fault. It's my young lady, Gladys. Yeah. Maybe you've seen her at the smuggler's rest? She is very sussy of you. I will I will not lie. Your young lady seems very upset. I know, but I can't think what I could have done. Do you know, sir? Yeah, She apparently. has confided in me a little bit only. What is it then? She is I'm the her boyfriend now. That you are seeing someone else. But that's nonsense. Someone she called only the slip of a girl? But who? She means that Marshall girl what arrived a few days ago. That, she's she's literally a kid, though. Ever since I first took him across on the sea tractor. Oh, so the young Marshall is, has a crush on him? Is that what it is? Have you encouraged Madame Marshall? I should hope not. But she's just a kid. <laughs> She'd be in school if she wasn't tossed out of that posh girl's school of hers. Ooh. In some ways, yes. She got Perhaps expelled? she is, as you say, still the kid. In others, who can tell? I did not know she got thrown out. We'll have to investigate that. Where has she followed you? She'll call for the sea tractor. I'll bring her across. Then she'll want to go right back to the island again. Then she's always hanging about the garage here. I think she may be a thief, too. What makes you say that? Well, my shovel's gone missing, hasn't it? And I first noticed it were gone right after one of her visits here. You believe me, don't you, Mr. Poirot? What use would yes, she have with stealing a shovel? it is not important that I believe you. It is Gladys who must believe. I'll wring that Linda Marshall's neck for her. I will have the talk with Mademoiselle Marshall. In the meantime, there will be no wringing of the necks. Promise me. I promise. Okay, so... He seems like a more stand-up guy than I expected. Sounds like the young girl is having a problem. We're gonna have to talk with her. Uh, let's start stealing all this shit now. Hands off me tools. Oh, he won't let us. Well, there's tons of stuff here I can take. I just need him to get out. Buddy, you should not have told us that you were paranoid about the thieves in your shop. Hold no Dash it all, Poirot! Your little idiosyncrasies are infuriating! <laughs> Nonsense. The cars, they do not belong to Poirot. Poirot will leave them be. It isn't fair. I should be able to go for a spin, <laughs> if only to clear the cobwebs from my brain. In the interest of friendship, I will not comment about the cobwebs. God damn it. These two are great. Uh, is there anything else in here? I suppose that's it. Okay, let's 
go have a look around outside. Is this to call him? Hello. Who is this, please? Oh, he hung up immediately. Not much can be done with that old skiff. They think it is falling to pieces. Hmm. Something tells me that was Mr. North on the phone. The village is practically abandoned. Yo! We love Bavarian architecture. Hell yes. I gotta learn how to build like that in Minecraft. I always say that, but I really do. Is this the pub? No. Oh, this is the library, isn't it? Real quick, hang on. What was the book that uh, she gave us to return? Love's Captive? Hang on, that's familiar. We saw this somebody else. We saw this somewhere else. Love's Captive by Mrs. Arabella Richardson. This was the book that Masterson had, the, the chauffeur from Murder on the Orient Express. Interesting. I wonder if there's any significance to that, because we already have had an allusion in this game to, uh, and then there were none. Multiple, actually. Hey there. I've got a book for you. Well, that is not going to help. Okay, maybe we I give it to her. That... Maybe we give it to her in conversation. Yes. Did I keep you waiting? I'm afraid I'm not myself today. I'm ever so distracted trying to solve this mystery. A mystery? Sounds promising. Do tell. What is the nature of your mystery, madame? Several letters have gone missing over the past few days. I can't understand it. I'm terribly conscientious with the post, I promise you. Someone must be stealing them. Were the letters valuable? No. They were important to my customers who were expecting them, perhaps, but none contained money or anything like that. Still, my customers are complaining, and I'm at a loss to explain it. Pity. I wonder what that's about. Kitty! Kitty sighted. Hello, cat. How may I be of service, sir? I would like to send a telegram. Of course, sir. Please just fill out one of those forms on the counter. Who are we telegraphing? There is no need to send a telegram at the moment, Hastings. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> Madam, what is the name of this creature? He'd better have a That's fat cat name. That's my Chloe. Isn't she a cutiekins? Cutiekins. Delightful. Quite the cutiekins. Oh, Chloe's a good cat name. Okay, and then she works the library too, so how this works? May I help you, sir? She does the post office, the library, and whatever that third thing was over there. It looked like an alchemy lab. I am returning a book for Mrs. Castle. Oh, Love's Captive by Mrs. Arabella Richardson. I've read that one. It's a classic. How anyone can call that rot a classic is beyond me. My thoughts I exactly. agree, Hastings, but we should not judge. You're right, of course, old man. Not everyone can appreciate true classics like Rough Shooting or By Motor Across Asia. <laughs> Thank you, madame. Hastings and I would get along well, it sounds like. I'm already enjoying him immensely. Uh, is there anything else in this place? Ooh, we got some brochures here. Almost missed that. St. Patrick's brochure. Brochure extolling the virtues of St. Patrick's in the comb. St. Patrick in the Combe Church is a delightful example of the rural stone church built in the 14th and 15th centuries. It features a weathered Norman front of polyphant stones from Cornwall and a painted screen and a few fragments of stained glass from the same period. The church is located on the track that runs west from the Avaton Gifford Herriton Cross Road and serves the scattered cottages and farms in that quaint, out of the way portion of the moor. It is a lovely walk of only three miles from Avaton Gifford and no more than seven miles from the Leathercombe Bay. Leathercombe Bay route in per is particularly... Le Leathercombe Bay route in particular is over some beautiful rolling Dev Devon countryside and highly recommended. This is starting to almost feel like Baskerville. Um, like Dartmoor from Hounds of the Baskerville, Sherlock Holmes, and I'm uh, excited about that because that is a book I've actually been wanting to read for a long time. This is a nice little village, though. And I think we found our pub. Doggy. Look at the size of that brute. That is quite the dog. <laughs> Shit. 
He sounds kind of angry. Let's give him a wide berth, Puerto. Bonjour, okay. Colonel Weston. Weston. Poirot, my old friend. What brings you to Leathercombe Bay? So we are a buddies with him. A short trip to the seaside to replenish their little gray cells. You stopping at the smuggler's rest? Damn shame, old man. I expect to get orders to close up the hotel any day now. This is one of the last coastal areas to be evacuated. Yeah, Poro, this was kind of a terrible time to go on a vacation. Dangerous times, Colonel. Indeed. I have spotters up and down the stretch of coastline. We've had several sightings of U-boats quite close to shore this month alone. Yeah, one of them is a Nazi you? spy. When? Let's see. August 5th, the 13th, the 16th, and again just last night, the 23rd. Poirot, those dates don't they match don't. at all. They don't. They really Mrs. don't, Carson I was about Cowan. to say. Yeah! True what you say, she's feeding him wrong information! Okay, she's totally, totally lying, and she's feeding wrong information to the, to the royals. Damn! Good one, Hastings. If you didn't say it, I was about to. You're in charge of the home guard? Yes, I've set up camp in the Leathercombe Bay Police Station now that their constables left for Modbury to help there. Okay, and any suspicious people going around? Have you noticed any suspicious characters about? Any stranger is suspicious these days. Did you have someone specifically in mind? I came upon a man who called himself North. He seemed to be trying to gain entry to the Smuggler's End pub. I have the only key. If he's that thirsty, he'll have to come over here to the mainland or break in. I'll keep a lookout for him. If you could get me a picture, I could send it off to Scotland Yard and see if they can come up with anything. Ooh. May I borrow the key to the Smuggler's End? Please. I would like to see if I can discover what interests him. Please, that's the haunted Be place. My guess. Yes! Regular law enforcement stretched pretty thin these days. Haunted pub time! Let's fucking go. Is that your stethoscope? Belongs to Dr. Neesden, a local coroner. He left it here last night. I was going to return it to him. Say, that would work a treat if we wanted to listen at doors. Ooh, good one. May I borrow it? Good one, Practicing Hastings. medicine without a license, Poirot. <laughs> it may be useful. One never knows. Oi, bro, you, you got a license for that? Dr. Neesden has others. <laughs> Do you have the file of the Millie Parsons murder case? Yes, at my office in Kingsbridge. A bad business. I'll have it set over this afternoon. The Millie Parsons case. Many thanks, case. Colonel. All right, Poirot. We've known each other a good many years. You need a stethoscope and the key to the pub? Well, forgive my saying so, but this sounds like a busman's holiday to me. If you are on to something, don't you think you'd better share? My friend, I have only the suspicions. We got more than that. But yes, I think there may be some cloud hanging over Seadrift Island. A number of items have gone missing. There is tension in the air. It was never my intention to take on a case here. But now, my visit may have become what you say, the busman's holiday. Well, let me know if you uncover any serious evidence of a crime. I'll be here in Leathercombe Bay tomorrow if you need me. Many thanks, my friend. I'm off now, over to Kingsbridge for a district guard meeting. Farewell. Well, it was nice to meet him. Seems like a real stand-up guy. And who might you be? Bonjour, monsieur. Hello, a new face. Join me, sir. Horace Black's Black. Name, Horace Black. We heard Ed this guy. Burrow. Hairdresser, are ya? I beg your pardon? Oh, I don't know. Something about your manner. <laughs> I am not a dresser of hairs. I am a detective. <laughs> uh, a detective? Are, are you sure Will you're not a hairdresser, Poirot? I arrived only last night. Okay, then. Uh, you're the avid sailor, huh? You are the avid oh, sailor. Oh, he's Mr. the guy in the sailboat, isn't he? Used to sail quite a bit as a boy. Not this part of the world, off the east coast. I could have a first-rate yacht if I liked, but somehow I don't really fancy it. Much rather muck about in that little yawl of mine. Little yawl. You would rather do the sailing yourself, perhaps? Rather than a crew? Got it in one, Monsieur Poirot. I like being in control, I suppose. Feeling the boat respond as I put her through her courses. Same with business, too, come to think of it. Made me what I am today. You've heard of Blatt's hardware, I'm sure. I may have... Have not. Biggest concern of its kind in London. Okay. I like this guy already. He seems genuine. It is not often one sees this sailboat with a red sail. Oh, I like a bit of change. No harm in it, I suppose. So that is his sailboat. None at all. Okay, so he's the guy we saw 
scooping around on the island. What brings you to Sea Drift Island? Don't really know why I came here. I suppose it sounded romantic. Smugglers rest. Makes you think of when you were a boy. Pirates, smuggling, all that. Pirates never went out of style, my guy. Pirates are still badass. What do you think of our fellow guests? Mostly a dried up lot of sticks, if you ask me. That Mrs. Marshall. She's the only lively one in the place. I should think Marshall's got his hands full with her. Oh, Redfern's all right too, I guess. He's been out once or twice with me in my yawl. Can't get hold of him now, always hanging about Mrs. Marshall, afraid I have to run over to Kingsbridge. You would sail no more this afternoon? I think not. Saw a bank of fog sitting off the coast when I was out before. Ooh. Expect it will roll in before evening. I don't want to get caught in it along this coast. Good day to you, Monsieur Poirot. Oh, man. Now, why should the fact that your detective get his wind up? Poirot! Hairdresser? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of dirty how he called you a hairdresser, Poirot, not gonna lie. He wasn't wrong to do so, though, because you do kind of... Just, just look at how he walks. What's with his hand? <laughs> okay, let's have a poke around here. Ooh, scram? Fancy a short game, sir? Three throws each? Oh, hell yes. I'm going to destroy you. I will try my luck. Oh, I pegged you for a sporting gentleman the moment you first walked in here. We each start with 301 points. Wait, is this not I scram? I don't have time for a complete game, I'm afraid. Whoever hits the highest score subtracts that from 301. We'll declare him the winner. Go on, you go first. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can do this. Wait, do I not get to play it? No! Darts may not be your game, old fellow. Poirot, you suck! Fancy a short game, sir? No. No, merci. Oh, as you like. Maybe later. You blow at this, Poirot. I'm never playing darts with you again. <laughs> okay, uh, well, anyways, Mr. Horace Blatt over there said that there is a fog bank rolling in, which I am really excited about. I love fog so much, and I actually live just a little ways off of Lake Erie in my hometown. And this time of year in the spring, we get fog like three or four times a week. It's it's so nice. I love it to death. Like to try your hand at a game of darts? No, sir. We've no, been miss. over this. Maybe later, then. No. Perhaps. You cheat. Uh, how's the customers going? Not many customers today. What could you expect? Most of the town has been evacuated. And very few tourists turn up these days. I'm one of them, though. Tell me about the dog. Does that formidable dog belong to you? Yes, that's Baskerville. I've had it since oh. he was a small... Well, he was never that small. Good. Great. Outstanding job. <laughs> that will do for now, monsieur. Okay. Um, there's probably some more stuff in here that's really obscure that I have not seen. A life ring, boy. Very handy if the pub should start to sink. <laughs> they drown themselves every day in liquor. Okay. Yeah, there's probably important stuff in here, but I don't have time to go look for it because I really just want to get out to the countryside. I want to go find this, uh, this church we heard about. I hope this isn't a dead end, though. There's a door over here, but I'm not sure what that sign says. No, no. The door, it will not budge. Okay. Um, there's got to be some other way we can go. Okay, maybe we should head back to the mainland after all. We can talk with uh, the little girl now and tell her that she's being a creep to Mr. Jenks and maybe smooth things over with Nerakot. Gladys, Like that a is. ride to the island? Sure thing, man. Yes, please. Let's be off then. That thing looks so funny. It looks like it would just teeter right over as soon as you put it in the water. Nothing about it looks buoyant. <laughs> that shit is There's hilarious. Lots of talk of Tom Cutter's treasure. It's said to still be buried on the island somewhere. Jewels and gold and all the usual in a chest. When I was younger, my mates and I would search for it. We were convinced it was up on that hill on the western side of the island. The way the story goes, Tom Cutter would spend hours up there just looking out over the sea. We never found so much as a singular coin, though. Pity. 